So another activity inside the uh, consortium that I was involved in was to generate a lot of transcriptome data. And I'm mentioning this because I think it's a really valuable resource for the community. So we annotated about 39,000 genes in the genome. And between my group and the Wageningen group, we sequenced 45 libraries of uh, cDNA. Um, 29 of these came from the double monoploid, and 16 came from RH. And just to let you know, these are heavily focused on tuber development. So there's a lot of different stages of stolons and tuber development. The double monoploid libraries are more focused throughout uh, the life stages and also on abiotic and biotic stress. So it's a nice collection of, of expression data for uh, the genes in the potato genome. We did this all with next generation sequencing. We had over 740 million reads. And these were used for annotation of the genome to improve the structure of the genes. But mostly it's used for inference of the biological function. So one thing that we wanted to make sure people are aware of is that one question is, is how many reads did we collect? And was that enough to detect all of the expression that was going on in those tissues? So what's shown here are the different tissues that were sampled from the double monoploid. What's shown in red are how many RNA-seq reads we had in millions. And, you, and this is actually from the start of the project to the end of the project. So this is just a reflection of how much more yield you get on a, a Illumina sequencing lane throughout the course of the project. But what's shown in blue is how many genes we actually detected as expressed um, in the different tissues. Um, the lowest one right here is, um, I believe that's uh, tubers, maybe? Or no, that's sepals. Um, and then this one up here is, is salt stress. So it's actually, there's only a very weak correlation between the number of reads you have and whether the gene's expressed. And once you reach a certain threshold of about 10 million reads, 5 or 10 million reads, you've sampled the, as many transcripts as you can. So for the DM that we did, um, we did 29 uh, different libraries. We had 600 million reads. And in this developmental time series, um, we detected expression of 60% of the genes. And we were able to make a, a hierarchical clustering of the different tissues and their expression patterns. What's shown over here are all the different fruit and flower libraries. Right here are roots and callus. Um, uh, over here is um, stress conditions. Um, and then over here is wounding conditions. And then here's the tubers and stolons. And then these are the biotic stress. So the other thing that we did is we compared RH to DM. We had had not only the back sequences that we started with RH, but we also had some whole genome shotgun sequence for, for RH. And we compared the different haplotypes. And in one comparison, where we compared 99 megabases of the RH back sequence to the double bonoploid genome, we found that the overall sequence identity was 97.5%. There was one SNP every 40 base pairs and one insertion deletion every 394 base pairs. And if we looked within the RH, we actually found that the sequence identity was a little bit less, 96.5. There is one SNP per 29 base pairs and one indel every 253 base pairs. So for cultivated potato, now I'm going to tell you a little bit about the, the work that we did here on the SOLCAP project. We sequenced the transcriptomes of three varieties using this RNA-seq method. And we got sequence from Snowden Atlantic and Premier Russet. And what we did here was we took tuber, leaf, flower, and callus tissue. We made normalized libraries. And we sequenced this um, on the Illumina flow cell. And we got 30 million reads for each one of these libraries. Um, we, we anticipate here, we predict that we got 50x coverage of the transcriptome, which is really deep coverage for SNP discovery. So this was the purpose of this, was to do SNP discovery to design the Infinium um, chip. So we went through a computational pipeline. This is published um, in BMC Genomics this year. And what we did was we took our RNA-seq reads from those three cultivars. We also went to the public database and got the Sanger ESTs. And we did, went through some filtering to remove um, low confidence SNPs. Um, we then aligned them to the genome to find a genomic position for the SNPs. And we ended up with a set of 69,000 SNPs that we're calling high confidence SNPs. So these are available. These have met the Infidium design standards. And these are available on the SOLCAP um, uh, website. I'll go through that 